It's been about two years since I made my first video on Enderall titled The Skyrim Mod Better Than Most RPGs. Today, I want to bring up Enderall once again, as they've taken this well-received passion project and not only expanded and improved upon it, but have made it easier to play than ever. Enderall Forgotten Stories is part of a line of RPGs made by repurposing the assets and engine of the Bethesda games and pushing the boundaries of what exactly a mod can be until it becomes its own standalone game. Arkwend and Miar Aranath from Morrowind, Nairim in Oblivion, and now Enderall for Skyrim. Over the past decade, a separate world has been built and fleshed out by Sure AI, with its own heroes and mythos, villains and history, and with each release, their skill and ability to tell stories has grown. In something very rare for a mod, it's been allowed to be released as its own game on Steam for free, complete with Steam cloud saves, achievements, and even its own mod workshop, although because it's built off of Skyrim assets, you do need to have one of the non-special edition versions of Skyrim in your Steam library to play it, and I'm outright saying it now, if you're an RPG fan, you should play this. If you've checked out Enderall in the past, The Forgotten Stories is sort of an enhanced version available only through Steam. It comes with an expansion's worth of content weaved through the game organically instead of just added on to the end, as most of the stuff that you'll find are things that they wanted to include in Enderall initially. Two entirely new classes and playstyles loosely based around an improved crafting system. There are new items, new skills, new abilities, even new side quests and new guild quest lines to undertake which play with the idea of linear questing. And maybe even a way to end the game differently if you pay close attention. Enough to think about giving Enderall another go if you hadn't, and it's in a much better state than the last time I said that you absolutely should play this game. As an RPG, and trying not to spoil anything, what I can and should say is a bit restricted, but luckily being built on Bethesda's engine does a lot of the talking for me. If you've played any of the Elder Scrolls games, you know how it feels to move your character, swing your weapons, cast spells, and navigate dialogue and menus. You're also painfully aware of the goofiness of the engine, the sometimes broken AI or quirks of a system that really does do the best that it can but falls short in funny ways constantly and is no stranger to instability and crashes. On the other hand, the engine makes it feel familiar, and while it's in fashion to make jokes about Skyrim being released for the fridge or fill in the blank something something Fallout 76, a lot of people adore these games, and playing this feels comfy and the closest thing you can get to replaying these games fresh without prior knowledge while also not giving the impression that this is just something tacked on to Skyrim. There is a quality present here that will impress you if you've spent time with Skyrim or in the mod scene in how they're able to transform it into a distinctly separate experience that many believe, myself included, is better than the game it piggybacks off of. What Enderall offers players is anywhere between 50 to 150 hours in a strange yet familiar world. While the game uses much of the functionality of Skyrim, the systems have been tweaked, and Enderall has a much more traditional RPG approach, bringing back more classical role-playing game elements like earning experience points to gain levels, to gain points to allocate, to create a build and play style, to increasing the amount of skill checks, removing level scaling from the world, and infusing a good amount of mystery and context clues to solve those mysteries, removing ARPG loot schemes and having items exist where they make sense to exist. It places more value on the choices you make for your character than your own skills with the mouse and keyboard, and an authenticity to you and the world around it. It feels very much inspired by older games like Gothic or Arx Fatalis. And this all tends to get a reaction from players, citing Enderal to be quite difficult, which isn't exactly true, it's just not designed to fall over by your mere presence and weaken or strengthen itself automatically to maintain an optimally tested time to kill. The story told in Enderall, I don't want to say it's the most unique, but it's told in a manner that the best way I can describe it is it treats you like an adult and isn't trying to feed you a line. A current trend in stories is living in this morally gray area good versus bad versus necessary, unforeseen repercussions causing good things to end up bad, making hard choices. A lot of these games have a very surface level approach to this. 
Enderal fancies itself as a dark, psychological RPG. Now, sometimes the writing is a bit off, and I forgive a lot of it as this entire game is translated from German, even the voice acting, and they do dip into the morally gray as well, but what they say is less about building up a choice and trying to blindside or surprise you with some wacky outcome, and instead it's a more of an examination or an exploration into different ideas and themes that may drive a character or an event or a choice. It's not that it deals with its own world's politics and warfare and religion and choice, it's how it does it. And I don't want to say much more than that, but it's not uncommon to see people who have finished the game and say things like, they feel lost, or gutted, or hollow, or WTF. It's storytelling that makes you think past its direct implications, or even just outside of the game, and it gets dark. And it is probably why I so highly regard Enderal. Which on a side note, a lot of this, a lot of what they talk about, rings even truer today than it would have a few years ago. Now, not all the storytelling is glowing, and some of the voice acting is downright atrocious. There is a specific baker and a child that will haunt my dreams forever. But more often than not, and especially for the main character, the voice acting and characters are well done. That's the problem. Otherwise I wouldn't say all this, would I? Hmm. What should we do? Also, the way most of the locations are built and designed is well done. The word I want to use is dense. It's something I loved from the level design in Bloodborne or my game of the year for 2018 CrossCode. But in Enderal, especially as this like epic open world RPG, is less about it being dense and more that it's just not bloated and the space it has isn't there for space's sake. The points of interest are largely all unique from one another. They don't feel extended in length just because. There's a good use in verticality and hidden nooks and weird configurations and secrets or even unmarked areas. The reduction in bloat also has a weird influence on the game in terms of scale and structure. Enderal is much more linear than it seems. If you choose to run off the beaten path, it's generally with purpose, as the game world isn't as big, places aren't scaled to be doable no matter what your level is and will turn you away in a hurry, and this unleveled nature exists even without chain quests, which typically everything just kind of leads you back onto the main path if you veer too long. It's strange. It reminds me of old RPGs where you didn't nearly have as many options or the freedom that you thought you had. It was kind of this illusion where you were allowed to feel that way while it still kept you anchored to the narrative and didn't let you get lost, retaining this sense of urgency that a big story needs to keep you interested. This also is apparent to your character. You have freedom in terms of how your character will play through the many different playstyles and hybridizations between these playstyles, but who your character is, while you can customize their appearance, is very much given to you. It's not a blank slate. Now, if we revisit the use of Skyrim's engine, it should be noted that Enderal comes prepackaged with many quality of life, stability, and graphical mods, which improve upon the experience of playing default Skyrim in almost every single way, mechanically, but also visually. It is also open to the same level of modding that Skyrim has, depending on your comfort with this stuff. So even more graphical mods, maybe change the font, add damage numbers, it's your call. In regards to the difficulty mentioned earlier, there is a mod, the Enderal Gameplay Overhaul, which is worth a mention as it further stresses the need for good choices and smart play through the gameplay mechanics and makes Enderal harsher and require more from you. And in other terms, it just makes the game more difficult without just artificially creating damage sponges. As I said earlier, RPGs are tough to expand on when you don't want to ruin anything. When it comes to this style of game, these sweeping open world RPGs where the story and the journey is meant to trump the gameplay, there really are not many releases. It's been nearly four years since The Witcher came out, and outside of some big franchises injecting some slight RPG elements into their action or adventure games, we've had some CRPGs and JRPGs that come close, and even some non-RPGs pushing similar buttons, but similar games games with similar scope and this specific perspective, I can really only think of Elex, Vampire, and Deliverance, and Enderal is on a whole other level to those games. Enderal Forgotten Stories, even before this update and expanded version, sat safely in my favorite RPGs of all time, and this just further solidified it. And at this point, I can't wait for the upcoming Elder Scrolls 6, because I hope that Sure AI has another story to tell.
I want to quickly add at the end here that if you play and enjoy Enderal, the Oblivion mod made by the same team in the same world, Nairim, is set to have its own Steam release come 2020, and one of the devs for Sure AI has started writing a free spin-off novel that you can find in the link below. To quick note that that is on a Patreon page, but it does not require pledging. And with that, that'll be it for me. Until next time, this is Fever. Pulse.